of the Elder Blood, starry-eyed daughter of chaos, join our hunt. I'm the one who ordered the death of that elven baby. It was the best path to helping me find my daughter. Welcome back everyone, toss a coin to your Witcher. This is gonna be my full Witcher season two Netflix video. There are so many big WTF reveals, things that happen, so we'll break it all down. Lots of Easter eggs from the books, they jumped around in the timeline quite a bit too. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. They've already confirmed season three, like they do have a plan to make it through all of the book stories. So if you're worried about that, do not worry. They even have a spin-off prequel series called Witcher Blood Origin about the very first Witchers. There were a lot of scenes and Easter eggs that they included in the last couple of episodes of season two that helped set that up. So I'll explain what those things were during the video. But careful for spoilers for everything that happened if you have not seen season two yet. But season two mostly adapted the book story from Blood of Elves because that's the next book after the story they did for season one, mostly. Now they changed some things and they jumped around the timeline a little bit. Like they had some big reveals with Ciri's father, Emperor Amir of Nilfgaard in the Wild Hunt, which don't really happen till the very end of the books. They included some video game Easter eggs in season two and the video game plot doesn't pick up till after the books end. And they circled back around doing some big story that they skipped over during season one from the early short stories, which takes place earlier in the timeline. So we'll start with the biggest WTF moments and Easter eggs like the Wild Hunt, Ciri's father, Amir, the White Frost, Ithlene's prophecy, as well as the multiverse reveal. And then I'll cover the other stuff, like all the Easter eggs that helped set up the Witcher prequel series Blood Origin. So first things first, they end the season on the reveal of the Wild Hunt itself. And this isn't meant to be a vision that Ciri, Geralt, and Yennefer are having. They are not hallucinating this. They are legit, physically, on a different planet when this is happening. So when you see the Wild Hunt riding towards them on the beach, that's really happening. If Ciri hadn't used her power to portal them back to the main planet of the Witcher series, where they came from, the Wild Hunt would have taken her. They want Ciri, just like every other main faction on the show wants her, but for slightly different reasons. Everyone has a slightly different reason for wanting her power. Some want her for political reasons, some want her for magical reasons. They did a little bit of her Jedi Witcher training during season two, like they kind of trained her in the Witcher arts, but she's still very, very young at this point. So the origin of Ciri's Elder Blood, which is a big plot point during this season, that's what the title Blood of Elves is a reference to, the blood that flows in her veins, the Elder Blood. But multiverse travel between worlds, if you did not realize, the Witcher series is actually a science fiction story in disguise. It's not just magic swords and dragons. That feels weird, but I'll allow it. We just started talking about the multiverse in the Marvel Universe, like Spider-Man No Way Home is a multiverse movie. But the origin of series Elder Blood, multiverse travel, and the origin of the Wild Hunt are all connected. So thousands of years ago, the elders that they speak of during season two, like the elder blood in her veins, Vesemir thinks he needs Ciri's elder blood to create new witcher mutagen so that he can create more witchers. Elders are the original race of elves that lived on this main planet thousands of years ago. As Vesemir says, all the humans think that they died out a long time ago. And the elves that you do see running around with Francesca during the show, like you see them up at Nilfgaard during the later part of the season, those are a different group of elves that weren't part of the elders. Like they're like a completely separate bloodline. But what happened is that during the first conjunction of the spheres, conjunctions happen every couple thousand years, the barriers between universes weaken and it's much easier to travel between universes. So if you saw the trailer for the Witcher Blood Origin for that prequel series, they're doing the first conjunction of the spheres during that. You see like this green lightning in the sky, that's the conjunction of the spheres beginning to happen. During this first conjunction of the spheres, a group of these elder elves use the conjunction to travel to another world in the multiverse and claim it as their own, like a new realm to conquer. They conquered this new world by killing all the humans that were there, but they found that they actually needed a lot of slave labor. So they found another gateway that would allow them to travel between universes and created a group that would go around to different worlds and steal humans for more slave labor. That group was called the Red Riders, but then was later renamed to the Wild Hunt, led by Aerodin, who you see riding down the beach at Ciri, Geralt, and Yennefer at the end of the series. So way back when this first conjunction of the spheres is happening, another member of their race, these elders, Ithlene, who was a prophet, created her prophecy about the White Frost. To make a Game of Thrones reference, it's a very winter is coming kind of prophecy. The White Frost in the world of the Witcher is like a planet-killing, climate-change force of nature, like an ice age that will basically kill all life on any planet that it comes to. 
an extinction level event. So the separate group of elves that went to this different planet where the wild hunt comes from, they were worried about the white frost killing their planet. They used a selected breeding program within their race to create a being imbued with enough magical power to stop the white frost. Siri is just the current person in present day to inherit the power through the specific bloodline. Now she's just the latest in a long bloodline, so there are other bastards who rose up along the era, so there are other people who might have potential for the elder blood. Siri's not the only person, but she's just the person who has the purest form of the elder blood within her. What happened when they started the elder blood program though is that the king of this race of elves had a daughter who was supposed to marry another elf of their race and pass the bloodline along to their child. Her name was Laura Doran, which might sound familiar. We actually saw her at the end of The Witcher season two. Like Siri has a vision of her with her baby. That's basically like Siri's great, 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 great grandmother. She kind of foobarred the whole elder blood program by falling in love with a human mage and passed her elder blood to their daughter that you see here. Her name was Rhiannon, so she was half elf, and that's where Ciri's elven blood, her elder blood, comes from. Like Ciri herself is part elf, Yennefer is also part elf. So that little girl Rhiannon married another human on the main world of the Witcher and so on and so forth till the elder blood was eventually passed down to Ciri from her mother Pavetta, and obviously she was married to her father Amir, the rightful king of Nilfgaard. But the blood came through her mother Pavetta, not through Amir. Ciri's full name, Cirilla, Fiona, Ellen, Rhiannon, is a combination of all the names of her ancestors. Like, this is what her family tree looks like. Where the Wild Hunt gets involved in all this is, like I said, the original elven king from this other planet that the elders went to had all the humans from their new world eradicated, so they needed more slave labor. He decreed the special cavalry unit be created with the mission of invading other worlds in the multiverse to get more slaves and resources. He called them the Red Riders, then they were later renamed to the Wild Hunt, but he named Aradin, the leader of the Wild Hunt here, as their captain. They used a special gateway between worlds they discovered, and on the show, those special obelisks that Siri manipulates to open gateways, that's the show's version of that. She opens a couple gateways to another world, one to bring basilisks to their world when she's being controlled by their version of Baba Yaga, the witch that possesses her. Then she opens another gateway, taking them to the planet that the Wild Hunt comes from, this other group of elder elves. So when the Red Riders started invading other planets, they wore special skeletal armor, they used their magic to make themselves seem more intimidating, just to inspire fear in the people that they were raiding. So underneath that armor, they look just like the other elves that you see on the show. But their race lives for a long time, so Aradin has been doing this since the very first conjunction of the spheres thousands of years ago. So when the Red Riders start doing this, eventually they discover the original planet that their race came from. The main world of the Witcher, where Ciri, where Geralt come from. And the funny kind of ironic thing is that the group of elves that the Wild Hunt comes from hates the other faction of their race, the other elders that stayed behind on the original planet of the Witcher. So once they find the original planet they came from, they start enslaving the other members of their race that stayed behind. And because there are so many humans proliferating on that main world of the Witcher, they also begin to take them back to their other planet as slaves. The other funny thing is that the magic that they use to power the gateways between worlds is actually driven by these special multiverse unicorns who have the natural ability to travel between worlds. They're like these extra dimensional beings that look kind of like unicorns. Eventually the Wild Hunt can't find any more unicorns so they begin to lose the ability to access the gateway between worlds and they still want to go around conquering other worlds. So once they learn of Ciri's existence, like, oh, this is a person who has the Elder Blood, they learn that she has enough power to access the gateway between worlds, like Ciri portals Geralt and Yennefer to this other planet with her own power. Once the Wild Hunt learns about that, they want Ciri so that they can access the gateway and conquer more worlds. But you also have to remember that the Wild Hunt comes from the group of elves that started the Elder Blood program to stop the White Frost. So they're members of their race that are still afraid of the White Frost and they want Ciri's power to stop that. But Aridin and the Wild Hunt mostly just want her so that they can conquer more worlds of the multiverse. But Ciri doesn't actually fight the Wild Hunt themselves physically until the events of the video games, which take place much later in the timeline after the events of the books have ended. So they might accelerate that on the TV show quite a bit. Moving on to the next big reveal, her father is Emperor Amir. That's a completely separate thing. Like all the stuff with the Wild Hunt is totally different from what's happening with Amir. In the books, you don't really learn about the connection to Amir till the very last book. But the reason he wants Ciri is more about stopping the White Frost and using her power to conquer the planet. 
During season one and season two, they call him the White Flame, and he's in the middle of this campaign to conquer the entire continent, like they start with Sintra. Eventually, another secret villain on the show, Vilgefortz, starts working with Amir, telling him all about Ithlane's prophecy of the White Frost, and that's how he learns of Ciri's true value. Like, oh, not only is she really powerful and she can defeat armies, we also have this giant ice age that could kill the entire planet, so we might need her for that as well. But Amir doesn't really learn about the White Frost till later. He mostly wants Ciri to conquer the planet for political reasons. And even though they tease him doing a couple really terrible things during season two, like killing Francesca's child, like, oh, that was me that did that. There are things that he did that were way worse involving Siri's mother that I'll talk about later once they reveal that on the show. I don't want to get too much into that because there's more backstory for his character. Like they only tease what he was doing between the events of season one and season two. Because remember, we only see him in the flashbacks of season one. We don't see him in the present day of season one. Like all this stuff with the curse coming off of him, that's happening before Siri is born. They'll probably tease more of his backstory and all the other terrible stuff that he did after this in season three. But overall, his story during season three will be like an accelerated version of what you've seen between the books and the games. Eventually, Siri will probably come face to face with him, maybe by like season four or season five, and she'll have to reject him because by that point, Geralt will be the person that she truly thinks of as her father. She kind of already does that during season two. Papa Bless. All the stuff with Ryance during season two is right out of the books, Blood of Elves. He's kind of like the main villain of this book that they did for the story. But in the books, he's secretly working for Vilgefortz. And on the show, they've only really hinted at Vilgefortz having some ulterior motives or some other plan. He's not a really huge character during season two. And during the season two episodes, they never fully reveal who Ryance is working for. But it's supposed to be Vilgefortz. And Vilgefortz, like take it one step back, is supposed to be working for Emperor Amir. Although separately, Vilgefortz has his own reasons for wanting Ciri's power. But he doesn't really become a main villain character till much later in the books. Because they're speeding so many other big plot twists up, they might also speed that reveal up too. Right now, the show wants you to think that the main villain is Emperor Amir, Ciri's father, like full on Darth Vader reveal. But the thing is, in the series, there isn't really any one main villain. Everyone is kind of different levels of terrible. But next big thing, all the stuff with Vesemir creating that new Witcher mutagens with Ciri's blood, the scenes with Laura Doran and her daughter, Ciri's great, 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 great grandmother, many times removed. It all the talk about the conjunction of the spheres was meant to set up the Witcher prequel series Blood Origin. The title is a reference to the origin of the Witcher mutagen that human and elven sorcerers used to create the first Witchers. Like I said, the green lightning that you see in the trailer here is during the first conjunction of the spheres while it's taking place. They haven't revealed all the characters on the show, but you will definitely recognize Michelle Yeoh playing this elven sorceress. The books in the games haven't really covered a ton about the very first Witchers. They've only hinted at that story, so the show will take that and kind of extrapolate based on Sapkowski's notes. They haven't said exactly when they plan on releasing season three, hopefully at the end of next year, but that will cover most of the events of the next book forward in the timeline, Time of Contempt. But just like season two, they will add extra stuff from later in the timeline. Like that will continue during season three. They just introduced Dijkstra's character, the head of Redanian intelligence, played by Graham McTavish, who you'll recognize from a bunch of other shows and movies. He becomes a much bigger antagonist for Geralt, Ciri, and Yennefer during season three. And Redania has this big plan to try and conquer the continent they tease during season two. That will become a bigger thing in season three. As will the story of the elves led by Francesca. They fight for Nilfgaard, but they don't wear their colors because of that secret plan orchestrated by Amir, making them think that Redania was responsible for killing their child. So the war between different realms on the continent will heat up in future seasons. Very Game of Thronesy, like War of the Five Kings flashbacks. But if there are any other big questions that you have from season two that I didn't answer in this video or other Easter eggs that you spotted that I didn't talk about, just write them below in the comments. Big reminder, I'll be doing episode videos for the Star Wars Book of Boba Fett. My full episode one video will post next Wednesday in a couple of days when they release that. It's kind of like the Mandalorian season 2.5 with a bunch of Mandalorian characters crossing over like Mando, Grogu, maybe Bo-Katan, maybe some others. While you wait for that, click here to learn about the Spider-Man No Way Home alternate ending in all the deleted scenes and click here for my full Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness trailer video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and toss a coin to your Witcher.